into our last section of the show it is combat corner combat corner and we're going to jump right into the first fight uh aj anthony joshua against francis ngano um i hope francis is doing well um that was a vicious blow he took vicious vicious blow um i've said it i think i said on the last show i said it to people around me people who I'm someone who boxed for a very long time, back in the ring. And um, I can go toe-to-toe with Max Kellerman, with all things boxing. I knew AJ would destroy him. I didn't think it would be in the second round. I, I, I think he would. I thought it would go to distance. I thought he would win by points. But AJ just looked sharper. He just looked sharper last Friday. He just looked like, um, I, I think people have been disrespecting me. People aren't really talking about me the way that they're talking about Tyson Fury. And I he, he really wanted to make a huge example out of it. But I will say this, though. Did Francis really lose? And Francis' his whole UFC career, he made $4 million. In two boxing matches, he made 30 Not really sure if he lost. And he's shown that he can still be someone that puts people in the seats and sells pay-per-view. So he's going to have maybe another three or four boxing matches. I don't know who is who it against, but he's going to have a couple of more boxing matches mm-hmm. only because people will buy. People will that's buy. A, it doesn't matter. Good. It doesn't matter. No, they think. won't. They, they will. Do you want, I will bet a thousand dollars he has another boxing match. I didn't say they will buy it though. You said that you bet that they will buy. Francis couldn't sell UFC fights. Boxing is not UFC. He wants I'll to be a boxer because because insane. Tyson Fury sells yeah. and Anthony Joshua sells. Uh, who else will he fight? Wilder? <clears throat> yes, who Wilder's would he fight? Wilder's coming off a lot. Wilder's yeah. off a lot. Remember, people don't realize this. Like Heavyweight fighters, they rank the top 125. Like he can, and he has a deal with Saudi Arabia. He could fight anybody. Like, Are you going to pay, are you gonna pay him $20 million to fight number 125 though? I'm not going to pay anybody anything, but I don't know what the Saudi Arabian. I don't even think the Saudi Arabians will pay him $20 million to fight number 125. You don't know that. He can fight anybody in the top 10. Like, he, can, he has a ton he of people. He wouldn't, be anybody, he wouldn't be anybody in the top 10. And he proved it that on Friday. If he wins or loses, it's entertainment. The... It's entertainment. And he is entertaining. To whom? The, the Saudi Arabians who are trying to. It As you said last week, disguise the fact that they you. treat their treat, that, that they they commit the some of the they biggest atrocities in the world. Support high value <laughs> entertainment. Francis Ngannou is an international star. It's a second fact. round. Second round. That's not entertaining. That's not entertaining, Ronald. I watched. Did you watch the fight? No, no y'all. Because yes. yeah, did you see it when it happened? Or like it was? Yes. It was embarrassing. Yes. And they spent the entire okay. broadcast pumping him up like he was going to win. I can name superstar fighters that have been put to sleep and they went back to entertaining. Manny Pacquiao was put to sleep where people thought he died versus Marquez in the fourth fight. People thought he died. And he's fought maybe 12 more times after that. It doesn't matter that you've lost. It honestly doesn't even matter how you lost he has created a niche for himself where he's going to be doing his fights not in vegas in the middle east their economics are different their entertainment their craving for entertainment is different mark my words he's going to have quite a few more boxing matches it may not be against the anthony joshua's of the world or the tyson furies of the world but he's going to have other fights that's it this is from the boxing aficionado. You can take it or not, but he's going to have more boxing matches. He is. That's a fact. I watched that fight when it happened in my car driving to Lakeland, so FHP don't send me a ticket. Um, but I watched that fight when it happened, and they the whole broadcast was talking about how 
Joshua was nervous because he didn't want to talk to the media. And Ngannou looked so calm. That calmness lasted the first big right hand that landed on his jaw, where he, where he was literally out in the first round. And I think what we saw was a matter of Anthony Joshua training, whereas Tyson Fury trained with a burger in one hand and a beer in the other. Tyson Fury did not train for that fight versus Ngannou. He was overweight and out of shape, and it was obvious. Because I believe that if Tyson Fury had trained, he'd have done the same exact thing inside of five rounds. I picked AJ inside of five rounds to put him out. And he put him out in two. And the way he put him out, the referee should have stopped the fight after the first knockdown of the second round. Because when that first knockdown came, he was out. He was, his mouth was busted open. He looked lost. And the immediate next punch had him folded over like Stipe Miocic when he fought him in the UFC. And it was, he was out on the ground for four minutes at least. He was unconscious. And I don't know what people think about that, but when you're unconscious, that's scary. That's a scary situation. And what I saw was a real boxer destroy a non-boxer. And it's what I expected Fury to do. And it's what I expect any boxer in the top 10 going forward to do because they're going to train. Because the fact is he's strong as hell. And we all know that with one shot, he can drop somebody. There's no question about it. But that's his only shot. That's his only shot is a one big haymaker shot. The only fight, the only fight that I would have any interest in seeing with him in again is Deontay Wilder. Nobody else. Joseph Parker will run circles around him. It'll be boring. The big man from China could be interesting because they're both slow and big and strong. And I mean, that man packs a humongous punch also because he fought Parker in the earlier fight, dropped Parker twice but lost the decision because the other eight rounds, he didn't do anything because he couldn't move. But that fight, I think, I don't, I mean, the fact of the matter is, Ngano still has to fight in the PFL. And when you get knocked out like that, I think he should take six months off at least. At least. Because that is a devastating knockout. You, you, you. Comparing these them to Pacquiao, like Pacquiao had 60-some-odd fights. Like, you're comparing a guy with two boxing matches. He's 37 years old to a man who's been a, fight, a boxer his entire career, a multiple-time champion, multi-division champion. I understand the comparison, but uh, you're comparing a novice to a pro. Yeah, you know boxing better than I do, no question about it. And, yes, if the Saudi Arabians want to throw money at it, they can throw money at it. I'm not saying that Engano hasn't won by making a boatload of money. I'm very happy for him. But I think he'd be better off going back to the PFL, fighting that one big man, win the title, retire from that, and then go back to box if he wants to get get some confidence back. Because I don't see how he walks into any ring confident now. He had a fake bravado about him. He got really fucking arrogant the week of the fight. He was talking hella shit to Fury. You're about to fight Anthony Joshua, and you're talking shit to Fury on Thursday in a press conference? Talking about if we saw each other in the street, what, like, are you fucking kidding me? First of all, street fight is not an octagon fight. A street fight, I can take a bat and hit you in the head with it. A street fight, I can do a lot of things that I can't do in an octagon. So I wouldn't put it past Tyson Fury, who's six foot nine and 280 pounds, to do some dirty shit in a street fight. So that whole attitude, but that whole attitude he had the entire week, he got arrogant. He, I, he got arrogant, man. And you know that if you, you saw any other fighter sitting here talking to another fighter while you're fighting that guy right there who's a multiple-time champion as well, it, are you overlooking Anthony Joshua? I don't know. I hope that he goes back to MMA. I, I'm tired of, of MMA fighters thinking that they're boxers. It bothers me because I don't think a boxer would dare ever go over to MMA if it wasn't for the fact that these MMA fighters are constantly calling boxers out. Boxers don't call out MMA fighters. MMA fighters are calling boxers out because they're the ones that benefit from the fight. They're the ones that want to get paid because they're not making shit or what they think they should make in the UFC. That's just my thoughts. Nick, you got anything? Yeah. Are you there? Yes, not. Let's just go right into... Uh... <clears throat> no, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's go right into um, UFC 299. You were in attendance. Oh, uh, that was a blast. I, I was at UFC 299. It was an it was an it was an incredible environment. 
packed house, loud as hell, some great fights. I mean, the, the championship fight was rather anticlimactic. It was kind of what I expected um, with Sugar Sean O'Malley winning by decision. He landed a knee on Cheeto Vera's face that makes me wonder that Cheeto Vera has like iron in his face because I don't think anyone else would have withstood that knee. He need him. I mean, when you heard, I was there. You didn't hear the noise there. But when I watched it back on replay, the cracking sound that he made on this guy's face, it's remarkable he didn't go down. And he didn't even go down. It's, it's unbelievable how tough Cheeto Vera is. But O'Malley looked fantastic. However, O'Malley calling out to Por- Ilya Toporia after the fight was pathetic. You want to call out the 45 champion? First of all, Toporia will knock you on your ass. That's the first thing. He, he, he throws with massive power. But secondly, you want, you're doing this because you don't want to fight Marab. Marab Devalashvili. You don't want to fight him. Because he'll take you down for five rounds. And this won't be an Aljo situation. Marab never stops. So maybe the, the I don't know what the UFC does if they're trying to milk the Sugar Sean train, but that's gonna if he fights Marab next, he's losing. He's gonna lose. And it, it's gonna be ugly. It'll be a dominating loss, in fact. Um that said, the 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 three fights I want to talk about specifically are Dustin Poirier and Benoit Saint Denis. That fight was unbelievable. Poirier walked in as a, a plus one eighty five. He was an underdog to the twelfth ranked guy in the, in the world, a guy who hadn't beaten a soul in the top five, top eight, top ten. He's in the number twelve because he hasn't beaten anybody yet, but he's been putting people out. And the week of the fight, there was a photo of Benoit Saint Denis with a mark on his head that looked like a staph infection. In fact, most people presumed it was. Now, for those who that don't know, staph infections require antibiotics, and, and it, can, it can drain you, can sap you, the whole nine. But you know what? You still have a duty. If you don't want to fight because of that staph infection, guess what? Don't fight. But he did fight, so guess what? If, you can, if you're in the, in the cage, I don't want to hear about excuses after the fact. I don't want to hear about your training camp. I don't want to hear about anything. I know that first round, Benoit saint Denis came out like fire. He was attacking Poirier, throwing bombs looking for takedowns, got, got his back, couldn't finish him. Poirier gets up, takedown, Poirier's getting up. Poirier's taking some shots. And in the second round, it looked like Benoit saint Denis burned his tank in the first round, which to me shows a massive level of inexperience. Because if you know that you have this issue, or if you, I mean, he claimed it, but the problem is he claimed it after the fight. He said, yeah, I was on antibiotics and I'm so sorry, I only had a one round of energy in me. Bro, you fucking were going balls to the wall in that round. So you shouldn't have gone balls to the wall so quickly because as soon as you went balls to the wall, second round, Poirier cracks him. Middle of the second round, I mean, he cracked him. He went, Poirier was going for guillotines left and right. Like, why will you please stop going for these damn guillotines? And he kept jumping guillotines. And, um, but eventually he caught him with one. He caught him with a big, a big shot and then dropped him real quick. He went in for a takedown again, got him off, knocked him out. He knocked him, starched him out cold. The place went fucking bananas because Poria does train down here. So, you know, this is like home for him. It was an amazing, amazing fight. I loved it for Poirier. And now there's talk of him being the next fight for uh, Islam Makachev in June because uh, Makachev's trainer uh, tweeted out that, you know, that could be the fight. I don't know if it is. I think we have to see what happens to Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway because Gaethje did put Poirier to sleep in their last fight. And see how they come out health wise, and if you know if Gaethje wins that fight and he's healthy and he can go in June, I don't see how you don't give him that fight because he just did beat Poirier. But I'd love to see Poirier fight um, Makachev. Uh, I thought if he had lost to Benoit Saint Denis, I think he would have retired. But yeah, he was incredible. I, I'm very happy to see that win. <clears throat> Another fight down on that card was um, Jack Della Maddalena against Gilbert Burns. I thought Gilbert Burns was dominating the fight. He was controlling top position. Madalena hits hard. It turns out that Madalena broke his arm in that fight. In the third round, with about two minutes to go, Burns has top position against the cage. I don't know what he did, but it seemed like he tried to advance it, and he made a mistake, which was shocking, because Gilbert Burns is a jiu-jitsu, a, a, a black belt jiu-jitsu expert. And whatever he did, Della Madalena was able to escape, flip him, get to his feet, and Gilbert Burns goes directly in for another takedown and catches a knee square square to the face. And that just fucked him up. And basically turtled him up, and Della Madalena was just hammer-fisted him out. 
you know, just smashed him out, stopped the fight with two minutes to go in the fight. I thought Burns was about to win that fight. And he went from about to win that fight to knocked out. Like he was busted up. I wonder if he comes back and fights again. I- I'm curious. I don't know if he comes back to fight again. Um, and the final fight, now the MVP Kevin Holland fight was embarrassing. I was very disappointed in that performance. So I'll leave that, leave that one alone. But the final fight was that Curtis Blades, Jonathan Almeida fight. And I think that you're going to have the, the Curtis Blades. Almeida went for takedowns. He was basically ragdolling Blades in the first round, which was really surprising because of Blades' wrestling ability. But in the second round, he goes for a takedown again. He doesn't even throw a punch. That's what's really – Almeida doesn't even throw a punch. Goes for a takedown again. Blades able, sprawls on the cage and just starts throwing hammers right at him, just hammering him. Knocked him out with hammer fists. And ended that streak of Almeida. And I think that we're going to probably see a Curtis Blades, Tom Aspinall rematch because Aspinall did lose to Blades, albeit it was by injury. Blades does have that W and he's already called out Aspinall. And I think that's the fight that we may see next at heavyweight. Overall, amazing card. Uh, Donald Trump showed up after the first fight. The place went bananas. <laughs> And people wonder why. People wonder why. Well, Miami Dade, for those of you you don't know, I mean, it's heavy Hispanic area. So if you're not familiar with Cuban people, a lot of Cuban people are Republicans, heavy Republican. But beyond that, consider the venue. The venue is MMA, and the tickets cost a fortune. So if you do the math, people are paying over $1,000 for tickets to go to this event. You're going to get a Republican contingent there. And Last year was the same thing when Masvidal fought. Place went bananas. So that's always entertaining because, you know, Donald Trump acts like a star <laughs> and he, he starts he's waving. <laughs> it's just whatever. It, it always it, it adds a level of like, why are, I was sitting by, in front of people that were behind, in front of people that were from New York. Like, why are people going crazy? I said, because we're in Miami. And it's a UFC event. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Like, do you, you, how much did your tickets cost again? <laughs> they're not free <laughs> they're not free so all in all great weekend and then i'll kick it back to you uh donald for our last topic on on the last uh, combat one. corner uh combat corner before we head out of here jake paul versus mike tyson it's been announced it's going to be on netflix um as a classically trained boxer i'm not going to discuss this because i'm disgusted by it so i have no nothing to say i'm nothing i'm, I'm disgusted by it um I think a lot of boxing fans are disgusted by it as well. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave this one alone uh, before I get upset. I'm going to leave this one completely alone. Nick, do you have any any thoughts about uh, the YouTuber versus Iron Mike Tyson? I don't, I don't have any thoughts. They won't get me. They won't get me for my 77. <laughs> they won't get me for my 77. Well, that's free. It's on Netflix. Well, they ain't if you have Netflix, you're going to... They, they definitely ain't going to get me for their Netflix prices. I can... But you have Netflix, don't you? I got somebody Netflix. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. It doesn't matter like, if you have Netflix. It's free. It's going to be on free Netflix. Well, you paid for Netflix, but that's it. Well, let me. I can see if I get somebody password. I don't know. Netflix don't went up. <laughs> They're trying to get me to pay the five. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We, we know you. We, we know you. We know you're borrowing boozers. <laughs> Nah, you know what? I actually have Netflix. I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm playing around. I actually, I actually have that. I have Netflix. I have Peacock, and I got Stars. Ooh, you're coming mm-hmm. up. I, I mean, I, I, I hate it. I hate everything about it. I, but I think at this point, it's like Jake Paul. Whatever he does, people will complain about. It doesn't matter what he does; they're gonna complain. So he fights MMA fighters who people say are washed up, but yet before every MMA fighter, they said that he would get his ass kicked. They said Ben Askren would kick his ass and he knocks him out in the first round. They said Tyron Willie would kick his ass. Tyron Willie is a trained fighter and Tyron Willie's not 50 years old. He was 37 years old, 38 years old, n- not too far removed in the tooth. I mean, still very, very athletic and not some chump off the street, built like a tank and what did he do? Jake Paul busted his ass. He won that fight. They rematched. He knocked him starch out cold. Donald, I know you're a boxer. Would anyone just take a punch to the face and, like, you can you can throw a fight, 
You don't throw a fight getting knocked out cold. It's too dangerous. There's ways to throw a fight and not get knocked out like that. And he got knocked out in a way that was scary. So he beats him up. Then he fights Anderson Silva. And what does everyone say again? Oh, Silva's going to whoop his ass. Silva's a great MMA UFC champion. He had just beaten Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who granted is a washed up, but yet former boxing champion. And he beats his ass. And Anderson Silva fights Jake Paul, and Jake Paul drops him in that fight. You think Anderson Silva's t- throwing a fight? Like, I think that when people say this type of thing and talk about guys throwing fights, it's very, very dangerous. Because one, most guys don't want to end up in prison. Because if you throw a sporting event with gambling lens, you end up in prison. Like, let's stop the bullshit. And there's no attorney on earth that's going to risk his license with some backdoor contracts, which you would never put in writing to begin with, because it would leave a paper trail of you breaking the law, committing felonies, and sit here and say, oh, yeah, they're, they're setups, they're fixes. This isn't the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather bullshit. This is completely different. Logan Paul fought an exhibition with Mayweather. There was a show, whatever. But then he fights Fury. So people criticize him for that. Then he fights Fury, and he loses a decision. But then he goes back and fights two other boxers, and then they say, oh, those guys really aren't boxers. Well, what do you want? A guy who has eight fights, seven fights, six fights, typically fights bums. Am I wrong, Donald? Facts. Yeah. Facts. Typically fights bums, built, used to build records. But Jake Paul's different because he has a following and people think it's a, it's a circus. It is a, it's a bit of a circus. But he fought a guy who was 10-1, and one, knocked him out cold. Then he fought a guy who was 17-1, and one, knocked him out cold. So now, and yet he's still being criticized because he's not fighting Canelo. Like, why the fuck would he? I mean, his dream would be to fight Canelo, I'm sure. But Canelo's not going to fight him. It's a waste of time. It's not going to happen. So do I think Mike Tyson maybe has some financial problems? Probably. Because it makes no... There's, the Dallas, the state of Texas, if they sanction this, should be ashamed of themselves. The man is 58 years old in June. This is supposed to be in July. He'll be 58 years old when he fights Jake Paul. And people who think that he's going to win over Jake Paul... I'm sorry, he will not. He'll get knocked out. Jake Paul's not a small dude. Jake Paul's training like crazy. People who say want to say differently, Jake Paul's training his ass off. He showed he can box. Will he beat Mike Tyson when Mike Tyson was 27? Fuck no. He'd be put through the fucking through the roof. He'd be put, put out the ring. But this is a 58-year-old man, and they keep running these bullshit clips that are clearly in fast forward, making Mike Tyson look like a destroyer. He's hitting mitts, and he's and it's going really, really fast. And then he fought Roy Jones, and he and he didn't look that damn fast. So, you know, I'll watch it because we're gonna talk about it, I'm sure. And I watch all this fucking shit as it is, but I'm disgusted that it's happening, and I'm sick and tired of it. Uh, I actually like Jake Paul. I when I first saw him, I thought he was a massive douchebag. He still is a massive douchebag, but. I have respect for what he's doing because all the guys that talk shit, they'll never do this. They'll never do this. And I think all these media members on national media who are acting like Mike Tyson's going to knock somebody out, get the fuck out of here. Like, stop. Yeah, could he? Is it possible? Sure. The man will have 60 seconds of gas tank. He's 58. And after that, it'll be a fucking clinic of jabs and jabs and jabs and jabs. And I expect that if it's a 10-round fight, Jake Paul will knock him out. But this whole thought that it's a fix... You go to prison for fixing fights. I'm sure fights have been fixed in the past. I know they have. But those are real boxing matches, not this shit. Not this shit. And will Mike Tyson allow himself to be knocked out on purpose? Come on. That's all I got. Yeah, guys. We're going to leave it there. I just, I, I have too much respect for the sport, too much respect for Iron Mike to to even comment on it, so I won't. When the fight happens, thank you for watching. Come on now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.